Hi guys, um, welcome back to Art Pizza Projects. Uh, today we're going to be drawing a orangutan and um, extending it into a painting. I uh, hope you enjoyed this lesson and let's get started. So we're going to start out with blue and yellow on the palette, as you can see, and we're mixing it together to make green. So put them a little bit apart and then mix into the middle. Then you'll find that you can get a kind of bluey green and at the same time you can get a kind of um, yellowy green. Uh, the yellow green will be lighter, obviously, and then the bluey green will be a little bit deeper. And this is all going to be the um, background. The yellow green can look a little bit like the sunshine coming through the leaves. So uh, what we're going to do is just try to get a, a generous amount, and it might help actually if you put a little bit of water onto your brush, I mean onto your um, canvas before you start. Uh, not too much, just to dampen the canvas and then wipe it off with a rag. It makes it a little bit more um, friendly to um, put the paint onto a bit easier. So, I'm just in this one, I'm just um, putting down generous amounts of starting out with the light yellowy green and maybe mix a bit of white in it as well, where the, the strongest sunlight is. So, it's yellow green with white, yellow green. Uh, sort of green, sort of a frog green, and then we've got this kind of pattern on the canvas. And I haven't blended it at all yet. What I do next is I take a bigger brush, a nice um, big brush. If you've got a soft brush, that's going to be helpful. And I'm not doing too much, I'm just going in the general direction of the pattern. Um, just kind of working along the same, more or less the same line, so blurring it out ever so slightly. As the paint dries, um, you can find that you might start to move the brush a little bit diagonally or different directions. But it's really important, very, very, very important in this technique to keep on wiping your brush off, particularly when you've got that dark color on the brush because uh, it's going to really take over the light colors. Um, dark colors are often a lot stronger. Just don't try to do too much at one go, just really gently build it up. So you might find that the bluey green um, could get a little bit dark, you might add a tiny microscopic little bit of white in it, or you might not, um, just to keep it light. I added a little bit, and you'll find that it's a nice cool contrast there against the, the other greens. So what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of crisscrossing here and there, trying to make not too much of a regular pattern just a random scrolly pattern um, that could kind of look a little bit like trees. The next colors you need is red and yellow. And so those colors we're going to add black and we're going to try and mix them together and make orange. Um, red and yellow makes orange and then we add a little bit of the black and then we'll get a kind of a brown color. If you've already got something like red oxide, that's also going to be perfect. You could start out with that, but still need to add a bit of red and a bit of yellow uh, and blacks just to get variations of light and dark. So we put a little dot um, just down from the, the top and a bit up from the bottom. In between those two dots, we're going to add two more dots evenly spaced. So you end up with a total of four dots, then um, drawing an oval. Top of the oval, another little oval. And then a small circle or oval around that too. We're starting to slowly build up one oval at a time. You can pause the video as you go. This is a little bit fast, I suppose. Um, but you get this teddy bear shape. Notice that the um, heads right lines up with the top of the first oval. Um, So then I'm going to draw like an S shape down at the bottom leg. That's a complicated shape. The other ones are kind of like banana shapes or ovals. That's okay. This S shape sort of shows how this leg wraps around a branch later on. And the other leg is sort of tucked up under, so it's kind of easy. 
we'll block in with um, that red ochre color we made. Now we're going to make a gray, black and white, mix it in, mix it together, put it in the face. I added a bit of the brown so it warmed it up a bit, but you don't need to, just a tiny touch. For the branch, uh, I'm just putting dots where I think it's going to go, so it's not too hard to change it if I get it wrong. Um, so yeah, now I've figured out the line, just follow that kind of smoothly with a kind of grey colour. It's the same colours that are in the face, I'm basically um, black and white mixed together to make grey. If you happen to get a little bit of the warm color in there don't worry that would be nice it kind of uh, gives it a contrast against that green makes it pop out a bit and okay so now we're um, adding the tones really similar to how we painted the background if you'll notice just put the colors down first so that they're wet all at the same time together light dark middle tone so dark is sort of dark brown Middle tone is sort of orangey colour and light is a yellowy, whitey, browny colour that we've mixed with the black and white, red, yellow. And then I'm just kind of randomly, um, once I've put the tones down, I'm just kind of randomly creating some texture. So I play around with adding bits of light, then I get the... Um, middle tones, make some zigzaggy shapes or strokes, just trying to mess it up a little bit but keep the overall sense that it's light on one side, dark on the other. So again, down in the legs, so dark. Um, middle tone and then light tone. And then again, kind of just making it a bit random, making some strokes here and there that look a bit more fluffy, um, so that it, it's not too smooth, so you get the idea of the shaggy fur. And it's starting to look a little bit more like a fluffy monkey now. Keep on adding those strokes of hair, just don't let it to be too smooth on the outline. Um, sometimes it helps if you push down the brush and then lift it up as you move it across and get a sharper line. So in this one, um, coming into the tones where I'm um, adding bits of darks. These can be the little shadows under and around the tufts of hair. So it gives it a bit of a contrast against the, the middle tone um, or the, the brownie orangey colours. Might use a smaller brush to work on some of the little strands of hair. You'll notice that the paint's still pretty thick and pretty wet. Doesn't have to be if you're using dry brush technique, that'll also work. Um, and then I'm kind of alternating between um, adding bits of dark tone, bits of light tone. The light shows the light uh, colour kind of shows where the hair might be sticking out and catching the light. The dark tends to indicate uh, the kind of underlayer or the, the shadow part around or under the tufts of hair. Generally we want to end up with the light colour being the last layer that we put on because it needs to stand out in front of those other layers. So for the face, we're just going to paint an oval, kind of a horizontal light oval, then a little headband. 
eyes and nose, mouth, smiley face, some little circles around the eyes, and then we're going to put the eyelids around there, which is a kind of a characteristic of this kind of monkey. So yeah, we've got our happy monkey. You can smooth it out a bit, play around with the tones. Going on to a purple now. We've got I've already got red and blue, so we're gonna add um, the um, white and grey as well. And what this is gonna do is give us a bit more variation in the branch, and we might also put it back into the monkey face or something a bit later on. Um, it makes it a little bit more pretty. It's one more colour. So this is just the shadow side, so I'm going to put that on the underside of the branch. You don't want it to be too regular because it's uh, or too smooth because it's a branch. It's like nature. Nature is pretty chaotic and messy, so that works for me pretty well because it's the kind of painter I am. Um, but yeah, you can make it more messy or textured. You can drag your brush in different directions. And if you've got a pretty rubbish kind of brush, sometimes that's a really good thing. Um, it's a bit unpredictable. The bristles can poke out here and there. Um, if it's getting a bit too textured, you can always get a clean brush and run it along that wet paint just very softly and it'll smooth out. But at that point you need to wipe your brush, keep it clean. All the blending that I'm doing in this, this is the main point of this exercise aside from painting the monkey, is that you can't really blend in um, acrylic unless you've got two colours wet at the same time, at least. And you need to have a lot of that colour. So you notice how we blended the background. We had a lot of green and yellow um, before we blended, then we blended. On the monkey, we had the dark colors, light colors, and other colors, and then we put them together and then we blended. Um, and the branch, the same thing. The, the, the dark color and the light color before we blended, and then when they were wet together, we blended. In this example here, um, I'm adding uh, the bluey green color. The background's still slightly wet, I think, but um, it's just enough to to soften it as I kind of blend it in. But now I'm wanting a little bit more definition because these are the leaves that stand out in front, so I don't really need to blend them in that much. I'm using a fairly soft bristle brush, and just sometimes you need to slow down. Sometimes you need to go fast, but sometimes you really need to slow down. So the leaves, individual leaves, just relax. Use your arm to make that movement. Think that they could be going in different directions. And then we're sort of building up mostly that bluey, greeny color. And then we can add, if we want, some little lighter leaves just to lighten that up again and bring that light, that sunlight, down through the dark bits as well to keep it nice and fresh. So I'm not really worrying too much about details in the hands. Um, unless you've got a real close-up, you don't really need to worry about fingers that much. You can generally just hint at the, the shape of the hands. So I tend to draw them like mittens. And then you can sort of make little marks that tend to uh, uh, suggest fingers or toes. But um, my focus really here is on the fur, the leaves, the monkey face. I don't really need a lot of details in the, the fingers and toes and stuff. A bit more fluffy hair. In the end I decided to lighten it up a little bit. A bit more shaggy fur. And then it comes and it pops a little bit more. Yeah, well I hope you've enjoyed painting this monkey. Um, feel free to pause the video and enjoy.